Welcome back to the Bearded Console Gamer, and today we're going to be breaking down a brand new teaser trailer for Breath of the Wild 2 that dropped during the Nintendo Direct E3 presentation. Now granted, that was a pretty short trailer considering that we've been waiting two calendar years for an update on the game, but there's still a surprising amount to unpack that could give us insights as to what the hell is going on, and also what game mechanics are in play. But before we get into that, just a quick reminder that if you enjoy the video, please remember to like and subscribe or I'll call my niece's stepfather's dentist accountant whose clone works at Nintendo and have her push the release date back to 2023 and replace all of the NPCs with Tingle. Okay, with that threat beautifully delivered, let's dive in because there's a whole lot of nonsense to unpack here and we'll start with a blow by blow. At the start of the trailer, we see Red Malice writhing upwards and seemingly attacking Link's arm. We then get a brief look at this emaciated Roman who, let's face it, is absolutely Ganon, and who has strange circular wounds with one marking each hand and a further two marking his torso right below the sternum. In that brief scene, we see him raising his hands as if he's controlling the malice and, oh, I don't know, telling it to maybe lift an entire castle into the freaking air? But more on that later. We then get a shot of Zelda falling into the dark abyss below Hyrule Castle, where the preceding scenes had almost certainly taken place. And Zelda being slow motion hucked into a gaping chasm like Golem into Mount Doom suggests to me that, no, you're not going to be getting a Link Zelda co-op system in this game, and that instead, we're going to be following the tried and tested Nintendo storyline of having the hero save the princess. We then see a white light envelop the screen, which is reminiscent of the light seen at the beginning of Breath of the Wild when Link is awakened in the Shrine of Resurrection. And that feeds into my theory that during the confrontation with Ganon below Hyrule Castle, Link is severely wounded and potentially infected with Ganon's malice. Next up, we get a beautiful scene of Link free falling through the skies above Hyrule, and immediately we can tell that something is different about him. Most obviously, he's wearing Kakariki green robes, and his right arm, which took the brunt of the damage during the Ganon encounter, is heavily discoloured and appears to be wearing a gauntlet, but we'll get into that as well a little bit later. He's also visibly marked on the upper right of his body, which could suggest that the malice is perhaps spreading beyond his arm, and he also seems to have longer hair in this scene, which could either suggest a time jump, or it could simply be a quirk of the falling animation. And one of the most important parts of the scene is, of course, that below Link, we can see a group of floating land masses hovering above the Hyrulean landscape. Now, my first instinct, and probably yours, was to link those islands with the one found in Skyward Sword. And let's face it, it's no coincidence that Nintendo chose that game to remaster to celebrate the 35th anniversary of the franchise. However, I think it's more likely that these islands were lifted into the air with Galen's Malice along with Hyrule Castle, rather than having descended from above. That said, there isn't any visible malice surrounding these floating land masses like there is on Hyrule Castle, so I could see either theory being a reasonable explanation at this point. Either way, it's very possible that these islands are going to serve as the equivalent to the shrine puzzles in Breath of the Wild, with the larger floating land masses potentially acting like old school dungeons from earlier entries in the series. In this scene and the next, which shows Link using a slightly modified hand glider, shows more of the levitating islands, highlighting their different sizes and characteristics with some supporting trees and ancient ruins. Next up, we get treated to a look at a new form of ancient guardian-like robot featuring a stone-like construction and a single eye. On each shoulder are scaly egg-like objects, and below these we can see a pair of Sheikah eye symbols. Now, the big guy could easily be another Hinox-esque mini-boss kind of enemy, but I've got a feeling that the Stone Chungus isn't an enemy at all, and may in fact be a piece of an environmental puzzle that you can maybe control using the arm. And my reasoning here is that you can clearly see green energy running throughout the creature's body, the very same kind of green energy that was wreathed around the hand seen in the first Breath of the Wild 2 trailer that was holding down dried out Ganon and keeping that evil at bay. Meanwhile, of course, Ganon's malice is red, further reinforcing the point that red equals bad and green equals good, and monster equals green, which means monster could equal good. And the idea that it's part of an environmental puzzle is strengthened by the fact that we can see the same egg-like features that are on the automaton's shoulders adorning the ruins in the background. Of course, I could also just be completely wrong, and we might just have to smash them for some reason. I mean, they are a slightly different colour to everything else we can see, and if I know my video gaming logic, and I do know my video gaming logic, that generally means that I should hit or shoot it with something. In the next scene, we see Bokoblins with gigantic head horns defending what appears to be a classic Breath of the Wild style camp, which the little red idiots have somehow managed to mount on the back of a stone talus. So that'll be a fun fight, and also good for them for making friends. 
We then see Link lying on a rune-inscribed stone slab as green energy swirls around his malice-damaged arm, which is wearing the gauntlet from the first trailer. Now, it's interesting to note that the seemingly technologically advanced gauntlet gives off some serious Twilight Princess vibes. And also that when the energy was swirling around the gauntlet, the hand inside it didn't appear to be Link's. The shape was a little off and the nails were longer, which raises the question, who was holding Ganon down for all of those years? In the next scene, we see that same gauntlet-wielding hand glowing as Link seems to first freeze a speeding metal ball and then send it back the way it came. So it looks like the gauntlet has given Link the ability to use powers that would ordinarily only be available using the Sheikah Slate in Breath of the Wild. And also, it wasn't an existing Breath of the Wild Sheikah power-up that Link used here. It's almost as if the new ability freezes and then reverses the flow of time for the object it affects, without Link having to actually physically touch the object to change its momentum, as was the case in Breath of the Wild. Incidentally, eagle-eared fans have discovered that playing the audio from this new trailer backwards makes it form the notes for the original game's theme song. So that, along with the new ability we just saw, and another which I'll be covering a little bit later on, suggests that reversing the flow of time and basically going against nature may be a recurring theme in the new game. Anyway, next up in the trailer we see Link in an underground setting fighting a new type of enemy that's clinging to the roof of a cavern. And in this scene, we see Link using a flamethrower device fixed to his shield, and it looks a lot like the ancient dragon carvings in the Zonai ruins that dotted the landscape in Breath of the Wild. So it'll be interesting to see if there's a big connection there moving forwards. And also, it makes sense for parts of the game to be set underground. After all, the greatest secrets and the most powerful weapons in Breath of the Wild, aka the Guardians and the Divine Beasts, were excavated from the Earth. And it's also where the shrines emerged from after their long slumber, so who knows what other mysteries are buried underneath that ancient kingdom. And it also creates a nice three-tiered kind of leveling system for the game world, where you got the sky, you got the normal ground level that was Breath of the Wild, and potentially some catacombs underneath. In the next scene, we got another good look at a traversal mechanic that's going to allow Link to travel from the ground up to the sky, and again, it looks like it might involve reversing the flow of time. In the teaser, we see a puddle seemingly revert to the droplet that formed it, and then we see Link diving upwards through the sky, hitting the underside of a floating rock, and then emerging on the other side as if through a puddle. So I'm not going to pretend that I understand what's going on there, but it seems like Link has the ability to take on the characteristics of a time-traveling droplet of water that goes against the laws of nature to travel against gravity upwards into the sky onto floating islands. That's not a sentence I thought I'd be saying today. Finally, we got another look at the cataclysmic events that we saw in the first trailer that shows Hyrule Castle being borne into the air by Ganon's malice. And judging by the nature of the scene and the otherwise normality of the surrounding terrain, I'd suggest that what we're seeing here unfolds right at the beginning of the game, directly after Link and Zelda's expedition into the castle's catacombs, where they meet Ganon and get royally roughed up. And that's everything that we saw in the trailer except for one thing, and that's the reveal that the game is going to be coming out in 2022. Now, let's be honest, it was always going to be a 2022 game, because we've seen literally nothing about it. And if you look back at the marketing cycle for Breath of the Wild, that's not a good thing. I mean, for that game, we had Shigeru Miyamoto and Eiji Ayanuma sit down with controllers in hands and give us a first look at gameplay on the Wii U all the way back in December 2014. That was well over two years before the game was actually released. With Breath of the Wild 2, we've had none of that, and Aonuma simply stated that Nintendo was aiming for a 2022 release date. At this point, there's honestly a chance that this game comes out in 2023. And then there's the fact that Nintendo is reluctant to give us the name for Breath of the Wild 2 because it could give us too many hints as to the characteristics and nature of the game. I mean, that's almost entirely nonsensical. We are going to know the title of the game before we play it, so any spoilers that it's going to give us will assuredly have been given to us before we ever pick up the controller. Delaying it a few months just isn't going to change that. And besides, to be that spoilery a title, it would have to be intrinsically bad, and I don't think Nintendo would do that. No, I think Nintendo wants to reveal the title of Breath of the Wild 2 along with footage of the game being played on the as of yet unannounced Switch Pro as a way of showing off the new console. And of course, since Nintendo hasn't officially even recognized that the Switch Pro even exists, they couldn't exactly come out and say that that was the reason for all the secrecy. Instead, they had to come up with an excuse and, well, this is the one that we got. And on that note, I'm going to leave it for today. I can't wait to see what this game has for us in the future, but that future just cannot come soon enough. Let me know if I've missed anything in the comments, and as always, if you enjoyed the video, please remember to like and subscribe, and to keep it here for future video gaming news from around the world.